الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحب في الله as we discussed this issue before we're not going to give it a lot of time but a question was asked can you make 10 minute videos for Arabic basic Arabic words I just started learning the books but I have bad memory can you give advice on memorizing vocabulary first and foremost as we've discussed prior to this that different people have different ways of acquiring language and being language learners and that's what this is about uh, when it comes to learning the Arabic language that the person is trying to acquire uh, the Arabic language and learn the rules of the Arabic language in order to use it uh, for the various purpose that a person learns Arabic for and so with that being the case um, <clears throat> one of the methods that people have used uh, you know, a lot, a lot of people use anyhow, is through flashcards, taking words, and so forth. And I used to do that in my early stages, and I learned some words from that. However, what I will say that's very important with regards to vocabulary learning, and like I said, everyone has different ways, uh, is reading. That the more you read and apply, because really grammar and reading the way it's going to have, uh, it gets its relevance is from having a meaning, being able to articulate something, being able to use, uh, as they say, vocabulary and use. So if you want to keep that in your memory, then uh, learning how to use the vocabulary in sentences uh, and in context will help you preserve that vocabulary. So it's not just memorizing a whole list of words because you'll forget them if you're not using them. So that's the whole point and why it's also important to read as much as possible. Kethrata kira'a, you know, reading a lot, reading books that are at your level. For example, if you're a beginner, if you can find grade school books for children in Arabic, that will help you. It'll help you pick up some basic vocabulary and they probably quiz you on the vocabulary in the books. And you'll see the vocabulary and usage in each lesson. And I found it very helpful myself, as I mentioned prior to this. When I was in Yemen and I had a, t a private teacher for a while who was teaching me grammar for about four months. And I told, you know, I was getting good at I'rab, which is um, a science of looking at the last part of the word and, and its position in the sentence and so forth. But I wasn't understanding what I was, you know, I could get all these complex sentences. Oh, that's maful bihi, that's maful mutlaq, that's this, that's this. And I was like, I don't know the meaning of that sentence, though. And so that I learned from that, that it's very important to have vocabulary in use. And what benefited me as well is this teacher that I had is he was bringing, you know, he was a secondary school th teacher or something like this, or maybe the... Uh, middle school, and he would bring me the books, and he would even bring me books, you know, I would buy in the sulk, in, in the marketplace, books that were for children that they used in grade school, and those were very beneficial and helpful, and had some basic grammar points, and some, some ayat, and some hadith sometimes, and they also gave you some vocabulary, because, you know, sometimes you can learn all these complex vocabulary, and you might not even be able to ask for what a watermelon, know what a watermelon is or uh, a fly or, or bread or something like this or ask for bread or buy it or purchase it. So it's very important by reading and having vocabulary in use. And you also have to realize that there is different types of vocabulary. That, for example, if I'm looking at uh, vocabulary in this book, this is an explanation of Sahih Muslim. Okay, this is... Brand new, Walillah Alham, uh, Sheikh Abdulaziz Al Rajihi, uh, one of our scholars in Riyadh, and it's uh, his explanation of, uh, or you know, Ta'liqat, or it's actually a, a, a Sharh explanation of Sahih Muslim. The vocabulary in there is much different than obviously if you were listening to an Arabic station to learn about political events. That's different. Uh, political science vocabulary is very different, or medical, or even more so of sh driving this point home, is in different sciences. If you take a thick book, not just a thick book, 
if you take a fic book in the Hanbali Madhab, and you have one in the Madhab of the uh, Hanafi Madhab, that those mustalahat, those terms, sometimes may have different meanings, even in accordance with the Madhab. There are books that are out there that are just for studying the, voc the, the terminologies of the Madhab. There are books I've seen that are pieces of research which are just the terminologies that Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah use because it's not going to be simple simple just get a uh, a dictionary and find the meaning the meaning may have had a certain context in that time period and then over time it may have changed an example there's a a book i have back here somewhere it's there it is right there in fact it's called uh zanadaka zanadaka okay uh, we often, you know, say the word zendik, or, uh, you know, we translate it as heretic, but it had a different, you know, through time, the earlier generations used it differently than the latter generation. Sometimes uh, some of these terms might mean disbelief in the context of one time period, and it may not mean that in another time period. So it's very important, or, or that it has a, a Farsi meaning in its origin, this word, uh, zandaka, or zandik, so it's very important, the point is, is that different sciences have different vocabulary. So, the shahid, or the main point is, that you need to learn, uh, you need to learn vocabulary in usage and in context, reading is one of the best ways to do that, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil,